before we go on to more things with classes and uh, methods related to classes, we're going to jump in and look at two new data types, characters and strings. Uh, character type uh, char, C-H-A-R, stores a single character, a single printable character. So it could be a single letter like M or a symbol like the percent symbol. Characters, single characters, are surrounded by single quotes in Java. So whenever we're talking about a, a character, we put it in single quotes. When we get to strings, those will be surrounded with double quotes and will be one or more characters. Um, so here's a sample program. It talks about printing out an arrowhead, it, uh, which is made up of a couple characters sometimes. So they show this dash, dash, and then a greater than sign. And so this prints it out. There's a, uh, just like before where we declared int is the type. Here we say car or char, uh, and then the name of the variable. And then we can assign it some value. But rather than just saying like 4 or 27, uh, when we talk about a character literal, we have to put it in these single quotes. So here's our single quote characters. Here's another one uh, with an O there. Um, and again, you have to, you can't use double quotes, you have to use single quotes with characters. So just go through, this is a basic introduction to characters. Uh, here we have a separation character that we can look at in a simple program that works with that. Um, we do use characters a lot nowadays. Most app, apps that we create are international and so we're often using different symbols for things like the dollar sign and the uh, different <clears throat> different characters, so uh, we do work a lot with uh, some character variables, uh, but we'll see when we get to strings, we'll use those much more than we actually do characters. Now every character constant is encoded uh, with a number, so every character is given a number, so like uh, the percent sign is number 37 uh, in decimal, uh, the letter A is 65, uh, the little letter A is 97. Um, this comes back, goes back a long time to a uh, code called ASCII, which uses 8 bits to encode things. Um, now ASCII has largely been replaced. We still use some of the same numbering, so, uh, and you still hear people refer to ASCII, but today most people refer to Unicode as the standard way of encoding stuff. Um, so here if we go to Wikipedia, uh, they give the old ASCII code, and again, back in the old days, we used to have to know ASCII codes in both uh, decimal and binary or hexadecimal formats, so it gives it in different formats. But again, today, oh, and then again, there's a, a, an ASCII code here that you can look at, and it talks about the control characters, but it can, it'll give every character, like the... Um, a percent sign again in decimal is 37. The capital A is 65. Capital B is 66. But if I look up Unicode here in Wikipedia and go there, um, Unicode encodes a lot more different characters and can handle a lot of uh, different alphabets and symbols categories. So a lot of fonts now work with uh, Unicode. So I'm going to skip over all the standards and get down to the different... Uh, Unicode is broken up into different ranges. Uh, so the basic... The, the first range mimics the ASCII code and it's called Basic Latin. So the Basic Latin range of Unicode has the same sort of symbols uh, out there. So um, the capital A is still here. Uh, and capital and the little a and all that sort of stuff. Okay. But again, just know that you can translate any character into a number using ASCII or Unicode. Um, now, some s characters are special and we can't really type them in. Example is a, a return character, like when you hit re enter on your keyboard. Um, another thing is that uh, a single quote, how do you specify a single quote? If you put a single quote inside single quotes, it just doesn't work. It, it confuses the compiler. So instead, uh, we have uh, some what we call escape sequences. We'll use a backslash and then a character. And the backslash tells the computer that the next character is a special character. Uh, 
so if we want to do a new line, we do backslash n. If we want to do a tab character, it backslash t. If we want to specify an actual single quote, it's backslash single quote. So if we want to put a single quote in, make a character variable of a single quote, we do single quote, backslash, single quote, single quote. Similarly for, for double quotes here. Um, so let's go on and talk about strings because they're very closely related in, uh, to uh, character variables. So if often you want to group a set of characters together, string them together. In the old days this used to be very hard to do, but today we have this string type which strings characters together and we can just declare a variable type string and so we can store a name like Julia uh, here. Um, so to declare a string type we just use the class string. Now this class string is capitalized and we'll get into more details about that later because it is actually a class not a basic type like an init int or a char a character. So you it's a capital S in string. So you say string and in the name of the string and then you can say equals and assign it a, uh, to a certain string. Um, so strings uh, again are have double quotes in them. So this is a simple program that's uh, based off an old game called Mad Libs uh, that we used to play where you would enter a name of a relative or a food or an adjective and then we'd make a funny story up based on that. Uh, but again, we're reading in strings. Now what, we have a new way of reading in information. Before we were always doing scanner.nextInt or scanner.nextDouble. If we're going to read in the next word our next string variable, we can just say scanner.next. The default next just reads in the next word until it gets to a space or an end of the line. Uh, so it reads in one word at a time. And we'll, like, we'll see just down below if we want to read an entire line in what we have to do. So if we have a string variable like the name of a relative, word relative, we can read it in uh, read in a string from the from the keyboard going scanner.next and store that into the word relative uh, variable. So go through this uh, these exercises, familiarize yourself with strings and how they work. Um, now as I mentioned before there's also besides next there's next line which gets all the characters in the line until an enter is returned. So where next gets it it's a single word until a space is found, uh, next or uh, punctuation is found, next line will uh, read all the way to the end of the line. So you can read uh, longer names, names like Betty Sue that have a space in them, where if we said next it wouldn't work properly for that. Uh, so again, go through this practice, go through these practice exercises. Uh, and try out uh, working with strings and then using next or next line to read in strings and store strings in different ways.